It's battle time, folks. And that's right, I'm putting Google Drive and Mega into the digital ring and we're not leaving until we have a winner. <laughs> I could easily make an hour long video comparing the two. Don't worry, I'm not gonna do that here. Instead, we're quickly getting stuck into everything you need to know, all the little details that matter when you wanna choose Google Drive or Mega. I will say now though, there's one significant difference between the two and I'm gonna get into that shortly. But don't miss it because it's gonna be a deal breaker for many of you. Before all that, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like and tap the bell icon and everybody wins when you do. The channel grows, we can produce more content that you like, so tap it. <laughs> On the surface, Google Drive and Mega offer a very similar product. They're a space for you to essentially upload your files, sync them across devices and access them whenever you need them, even sometimes when you're offline. They both came to life around the same time and offer a solution that's been evolving for over a decade. Google Drive is at the forefront of the industry thanks to being well, Google, and Mega is far from being a nobody though. It just lacks that mainstream appeal that Google has bought. <clears throat> I mean, earned, of course. But once you dive deeper, you see several differences and each service takes the upper hand in essentially different areas. I'm going to start with a quick side-by-side -side looking at some file management features they both share, what they both have in common. If you go with either Google Drive or Mega, you're getting a sync folder on desktop so you can easily save your files in the cloud. You get access to Selective Sync, which allows you to store files in the cloud or locally, whichever you prefer, essentially. You can also sync any folder on your desktop, which I like because it gives you more control rather than just your desktop and documents or just one single folder where you have to put everything inside that you have on your computer. Both of them have file previews and you can play back media, video, music, things like that. You can also recover deleted files. Useful if you're accident prone in the digital world and spill your cup of coffee over your laptop or what have you. Now let's move forward with collaboration features. Basically, how the two services help you work with others. Now, Google Drive has has the obvious advantage here. That's because it's been baked into its productivity suite, Google Workspace, for years now. And the likes of Google Docs and Sheets have become staples of online collaboration. We even use them here at CloudWords with our large remote team because it helps bring everybody together and work literally on the same page, on the same document. We can work on documents at the same time and our editors can change things up or make suggestions to help guide our writers. It's Google Drive's simplicity that helps us do the best work and I have to give it top marks here. As for Mega, well, it simply does not have any productivity tools. It doesn't even offer integrations. It's a bit of a hat scratcher for me, honestly, because if you look at services like sync.com, Dropbox, and several others, they offer a basic document creator or integrations with third-party collaboration tools. And collaboration is so important these days, right? especially that a lot of people have gone remote with their work, even if you're employed or you're a freelancer or you have your own company. Mega does have a native chat tool built on the service and think of it as a basic take on Slack, but other than chatting and pinging files, it hardly makes Mega a collaboration champion. Now, Mega is developing a VPN service, which does not necessarily have anything to do with collaboration, but it's like an add-on that you can get essentially when signing up through Mega. The first round was barely competitive, as you've seen, because for whatever reason, <laughs> Mega didn't want to compete. Clearly, I'm giving this one to Google Drive, although it saddens me a little bit because of their privacy, but we'll, we'll get to that later. The next round is more of a beauty contest than a battle because I'm gonna look at the design of each product. If you're anything like me, well, 
you'll favor vibrancy, modern fonts, clear layout. And at the end of the day, many of us are using these as part of our daily workflow. So how they look and run is important. And I'll start with the web versions because let's face it, most of us are in the browser anyway all the time. The design team at Mega came together and said, let's make the menu gray and dull. Perhaps they should have spoken to my friends in the UK. Nobody likes looking at gray and dull all day long. And Google must have been a fly on the wall that day because it went for dull menu design as well, though the font selection makes it feel more in line with current times. Mega's font selection and icon design took me back to the, well, probably to the 90s. And making folders and subfolders is easy with the two and you can view them as a list or as icons. And Mega has chosen a Windows 98 static and <laughs> Honestly, anyone want to tell Mega what year it is, please? By default, Google Drive's folder color is gray, but you can change this and there's plenty of vibrant colors to choose from to give your storage a bit more uplifting vibe or well, organize your files based on colors, which I pretty much like and I could not live it without. It helps me just find my files that are related to marketing or business or because I know how I color coded each file and each um, category in my digital life. And like me, many of you use cloud storage to back up photos. So you can open your files inside both apps, but there's a little feature I like on Mega, which Google Drive doesn't have. If you have a folder full of photos, you don't need to be wasting time clicking the arrow button to move through them. All you've got to do is hit play and you have a ooh, slideshow. It's a simple feature, but one that lets you kick back and enjoy looking at all your images after a trip or showing something to a friend or family member. Sticking with photos, if you want more functionality like being able to make reels, sort your photos with machine learning and make edits, then there's another option, Google Photos. It's Google's photo management app, obviously, um, but although it's a different app, it still eats up the same storage space. It's just a different way of doing things and it's packed with more AI features and compared to Google Drive app, a better way to manage your photos and videos. I'm not gonna say too much about the desktop apps because, well, there is not much to say. After downloading them, they sit merely as a sync folder on your desktop. You can choose which folders to sync and drag and drop them over if you prefer. So it's pretty basic. The design of the folder is gonna mirror the operating system you use, which by the way, is an area Mega takes a slight upper hand. Like Google Drive, it's available for Mac OS and Windows, but it's also available for Linux users. You've also got mobile apps on iOS and Android, and the look and feel of both apps is similar to the web, web versions. There are both very simple designs here, which for mobile is great. Clear upload buttons, a couple of clicks to share files and automatic backup functionality, all very straightforward stuff. This round was closer than the last. They're both similar and easy to use and they both have strengths in different areas. I'm inclined to give it a draw, but if you're forcing me to choose one, I've gotta give it to Google Drive again. It's more modern, I can color code it and the apps feel more polished all around. Having the option of using Google Photos on mobile gives it just a slight edge over Mega here. Remember that deal breaker I mentioned earlier? Let's take a look at it as now I'm gonna cover, you name it, security and privacy. Four standard security features, they're neck and neck, but pretty much all cloud storage services are nowadays. They're using AES 256-bit and TLS encryption for your files, which today's level of defense hackers have more chance of accessing Area 51 than your file. So quantum computing needs to come around and then they might crack that, but it's not here yet, so that's the standard. You can also set up two-factor authentication on each of them to enhance your frontline security. It's actually when you share files that you notice some differences in security measures. You can set user permissions on both, it's pretty standard as well, but Mega goes a little further allowing you to password protect your shared files and set expiry dates for downloads. You never know 
when a shared link will get in the wrong hands. So having password protection really gives me peace of mind, especially for those sensitive business documents and expiry dates just help me not forget, disable a link afterwards. Now, time to talk privacy or lack of it, at least with Google Drive. Regular viewers have listened to me wax lyrical about zero knowledge encryption for years. I love it and so should you. Zero knowledge gives the user the power over their encryption keys and ensures nobody, including the service provider, can access your files. Google Drive doesn't offer this. I know, shocker, right? <laughs> and Mega does. This instantly puts Mega in the pole position when it comes to being a privacy-focused provider. There are no extra fees to activate zero-knowledge encryption either, and it's also available on the free plan, so kudos to Mega for this development. As for Google, well, you'll just have to be okay with potential file scanning and an open backdoor to your files. The company gets round this essentially by saying, we analyze your content to help us detect abuse such as spam, malware, and illegal content. This is likely true, but we can't trust that's the only reason the company analyzes your files. It's up to you if you care about this, but of course, I think you should. Mega takes this one and it's a very important round, so keep that in mind when choosing between each service. Let's look at some speed tests result. The team at the testing lab ran them both for upload and download speeds. We use a five gigabit folder for uploads and downloads and run the tests on a 100 megabits internet connection to resemble a standard internet connection in the US or anywhere in Europe. So which one crossed the finish line first? For uploads, Google Drive got our files in the cloud in seven minutes and 15 seconds, and Mega took five seconds longer. In real world use, you're not really gonna notice a difference unless you have a stopwatch. Neither of them put much pressure on your CPU. This meant we could go on with other tasks without noticing a drop in performance, which we really like because it's all about multitasking these days. Looking at downloads, uh, there is a slightly larger gap between the two. Google Drive got our folder onto our computer in just over seven minutes. It was around eight minutes with Mega. For context, these are still very good results for both services, but on paper, Google Drive is overall the quickest of the two. So factually speaking, Google Drive wins the round, but yeah, it's very close and not really noticeable. If you're interested, in more speed tests, do check out the links in the description box where you can download our speed test chart and you get the full picture of which cloud storage service is the fastest. I'm kicking off the pricing section by quickly covering the free plans. Spoiler, they're both excellent. Both Google Drives gives you 15 gigabytes of free storage space and Mega gives you 20. You can actually bump your free storage to 35 gigabytes with Mega, but you need to do some simple tasks first. Also, the 35 gigabyte only lasts for the first 12 months of your subscription, and then you're back down to 20. Realistically, these two are some of the best when it comes to free cloud storage, but I've got a video if you want to explore more free cloud storage options. For the paid plans, there are more options on Google Drive. They start at 100 gigabytes of storage space for less than 20 bucks a year, and it tops around at around 30 terabytes of storage for just under $1,800 per year. And putting them side by side, let's look at the two terabyte plans. There's no real drama here. They both charge just shy of $100 per year. With Mega, the US dollar price may fluctuate as it depends on the current conversion rate. So keep that in mind and you can get a 16 terabyte plan with Mega and for that you'll pay just shy of 300 bucks a year working out to around 25 ish dollars per month. I think overall both Mega and Google are offering good value for money. The more diverse range of plans does give Google ah, a slight edge and allows more types of users an opportunity to use cloud storage. That said Mega offers a more generous free plan and if you need a lot of storage its larger paid plans are much cheaper than what Google offers. Overall, Mega takes the win in pricing, but it's, it's close, it's a close race here. Now, let's get on to the verdict. 
pound for pound, I think Google Drive is the better cloud storage service. The productivity tools are obviously better, plus it looks better and the incorporation of Google Photos really sells it to mobile users. The question here now, and I question this all the time in the channel, is it worth having a great service if it doesn't go the extra mile for security and privacy, sacrificing your personal data? I think if you're not looking to collaborate with others, then you have to put the privacy of your files above everything else. And I, I really do personally. So if that's you, then I'm going to stay with Mega and you should do too. But if you need more than cloud storage, like a space to manage a business and work with a team, Google Drive is where you need to put your money because it's just, um, there's just less friction, I would say. And that's just me though. I know many of you know your thing about cloud storage and I would really love to know what are you going for? Google Drive or Mega? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe, hit like and tap the bell icon, like I say. We're all winners if you do. So until next time, see ya.